morning guys um there is the two tutorial that i did so, um it's a conical wallet concrete wallet the one that you require to calculate uh, materials for it uh, i felt i should do uh, this video that shows how you use the prismal formula in this case um because in the case i have just identified that since we do have um two areas that are unequal i think it's better suited that we use the prismoid formula for this one um but there's just a minor uh i would say a minor difference between the one i posted last and this one uh but i think i would prefer you guys to use the prismoid formula when you have a case of two areas that got one big area and one small one okay fine so this is what we do guys we've been given a constant for the hexagon okay for the hexagon um how to calculate area okay remember the area the formula for calculating um with a constant calculating an area uh, goes as follows it says area is equal to side squared times constant okay Let's say the K stands for constant, okay? So, all, all we need to do now is that we know uh, the top part that we have 0 0.4 meters, which is 400 millimeters, and at the bottom we have 0 0.8, um, which is 800 millimeters. We know all sides are equal. So, we'll just utilize the, the constant, okay? But now, how do we get to the middle center? Because we need to use it in the prismal formula. So all we do is say, if um, the top part is L1 and the bottom part is L3, let's say the middle part is L2. So if to get L2, we say L1 plus L3 divided by 2. So it's 0 0.4 plus 0 0.8 divided by 2. That gives us 0 0.6, guys. Okay. Now we can proceed to calculate the areas. Let's first start with the area on top. We say area is equal to side squared times constant. So 0 0.4 squared times the constant, which is 2.5980762. And that is specific for a hexagon, for a six shape uh, uh, structure that is that has got same sides, equal sides. Okay. We get 0 0.42 for that squared, and then go to the bottom part. 0 0.8 squared times the constant 2.5980762, we get 1.66 squared. Okay. Then we come to the middle part, which is 0 0.6 squared times the constant 2.5980762. That gives us 0 0.94 meters squared. Okay. So it's easy for us to just take it into our prismoidal formula, which is volume, volume is equal to length divided by 6, uh, open bracket times big area plus small area, small area plus 4 times middle area. Okay? So our height for this is 1.2. So we say 1.2 divided by 6 times the big area, which is the bottom one, which is 1.66 squared, okay, as we've done over here. And then we say 1.2 divided by 6 uh, times 0 0.42, which is the small area, the top one over here. Then you say 1.2 divided by 6 times 4 times 0 0.94, which is the middle. Okay, guys. That, in essence, we add all of that up to get to 1.16 cubes per molar. As compared to the previous one, you can, you can notice that it just got 4, a, a, a 0.4 difference. Because the other one is 1.12 cubes per, uh, per, per molar, okay, from the previous example. Because... That one we took a mean, a minimum uh, area and multiplied with the length. Okay, so guys, we need we require twenty units of uh, for bollards. Okay, so we say twenty times one point one six cubes per bollard. That gives us twenty three point twenty four cubes. Okay, guys, and our mixed design is the same as the previous example. One is to three is to seven. So one part cement, three parts sand. Uh, seven parts so okay you know that you must add up the ratios so that you can have a relative 
um, uh, benchmark, if you can call it that. But we have to have a reference point to when you're doing your ratio calculations, okay? So we say one part uh, cement divided by 11 parts, which is our reference point, times, uh, guys, we've got a bulking factor here. Um, because concrete tends to get, get a reduction, it tends to get reduced either by shrinkage, and I did explain this in another video. Oh, guys, just refer to my previous videos, you will hear about uh, shrinkage and reduction of concrete. But we are just overcompensating, we are adding 30% so that we don't lose uh, the required quantities we need, and we're having a wastage factor of 7.5. Okay, so just go to my previous video. You will see uh, when it comes to concrete, you will you'll learn about bulking and all of that, but that's part of concrete works, okay? So you see, one, one part of cement divided by 11 times a uh, bulking factor of 130% times 107.5, that's wastage, times 30.3 bags of cement per cubic, con cubic meter of concrete times 23.24 foot that we are required. That gives us 88.57 uh, bags. But now, nobody sells you 0 0.57 bags. So we need to round that off to 89 bags. Okay? 89 bags times 75 rand per bag. That gives us 6,675 guys. Okay? Come to sand, 3 parts of sand divided by 11, which is our reference point, times bulking factor of 130%, times 107.5, which is wastage, times 23.24 cubes that gives us 8.77 cubes 8.77 cubes times 300 that's 2631 rand okay guys come to stone and we say seven parts of stone divided by 11 times bulking factor 130 times 107.5 which is wastage times 23.24 which gives us 20.73 uh, cubes of stone 20.73 Seven nine cubes of stone times three fifty. That's seven thousand two hundred seventy six point fifty. To add up all our costs, we get to sixteen thousand five hundred eighty two rand fifty. Now, guys, the reason we are saying instead of saying thirty percent, okay, in the in the bulking, our bulking factor is thirty percent. But we are saying we know we've calculated hundred percent of the cubes that we are required, which is twenty three point twenty four. But we're saying in the case that our concrete gets reduced either by shrinkage or over evaporation or settlement, we need to have some extra concrete, so which is 30%. We need to add 30% to cover ourselves for shortages. Okay. So instead of purchasing 100% of one of the materials, we're going to purchase 130% of the material. And then we go to wastage factor. Wastage factor is just the human element that wastes material they don't handle material well so that one it's not really it's just negligent that one we say in case these people waste the material on site we should be able to cover ourselves so that we don't have a shortage okay guys so we know we've bought 100 percent of the required material but we need to add 7.5 percent so we need to buy 7.5 percent more of the material that we we need we need on site okay that's how we get to 130 divided by 100 because whenever you work with percentages 130 divided by 100 represents percentage guys okay otherwise you can just as well just say 1.3 or 1.075 that's still the same thing okay guys um i would i would say in the case of the two exercises i did for the same same uh same structure i would rather you use the prismoid for this one i think it's better gives you it covers you more so that you don't get shortage guys okay thanks guys any questions uh, speak to me on whatsapp and uh, leave a comment and subscribe please guys